Hey, what's up guys? I'm Lan here. Welcome back to a new video on my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about iOS 16.3 beta 2 update on my iPhone XR. So yesterday night I've received this update. So as per the screenshot, as you can see on the screen, this update came in about 566.8 MB on my iPhone XR. And if you're having a newer devices like iPhone 13 or 14, it should be the update should be will be between 550 MB to around 700 MB. So keep in mind that if you have already iOS 16 beta profile installed, then only you'll be able to get these updates, otherwise not. So if you're having iPhone XR or any iPhone for that matter and using iOS 16, make sure you watch this video till the end. Now with that being said, let's get right into the video. But before that, if you're new here and happen to enjoy this kind of videos on this channel, do give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. It gives me a lot of motivation to make more such kind of videos on YouTube. Now with that being said, let's get right into the video. Alright guys, so the first things first, if I go to settings, general and about section. So first let's take a look at the build number. If I tap on iOS 16.3, as you can see, the new build number is 20D5035i. I remember, uh, you know, when we were on iOS 16.3 beta 1, the ending letter was E. Now it is I. So I'm not sure. Probably we'll have a couple of more betas before we get to see the stable release. Now I had taken a screenshot. So let me see if I can find that. As you can see, before updating, we had modem firmware which says 5.01.00. This is actually on iPhone 10R. Now if I show you the about section, you can see that the modem firmware is updated to 5.01.01. .01. So basically we have a new modem firmware with this iOS 16.3 beta 2. So if you're having any iPhone, let's suppose iPhone 12, iPhone 13, 14 or 14 Pro Max, please check your modem firmware update. A new modem firmware update always means that if you're having any network connectivity issues, that should be resolved with the newer update. So you have a new modem firmware update. Now, as I said before, as you can see, if I go to the VPN and device management, as you can see, I have a iOS 16 beta software profile. So if you're not able to find the update, please keep in mind that if you don't have iOS 16 beta software profile installed on your iPhone, you won't be able to sort of get beta updates. These updates are only for developers beta or public beta profiles. So now with that out of the way, let's talk about what are the changes that are there with iOS 16.3 beta 2, right? So first things first, if I go to the settings and if I go to this emergency SOS, so there are some wording changes. For example, I'm using this iPhone 13 and if I could show you the same thing, you know, if I go to the settings and emergency SOS, so you can see the difference in wording. So with the right one being the latest one, it says call with hold and release. And you know, on the left one, it used to say countdown sound. And then now with the latest update, it says call quietly. So there are basically some wording changes with this emergency SOS and stuff. So apart from that, you know, there are a couple of other changes that I've noticed. So with iOS 16.3 beta one, if I just, you know, click on this iCloud, I just want to highlight this once again. Uh, Apple has released this advanced data protection, right? So this advanced data protection, you know, in some regions or some parts of the world, they were able to turn on the advanced data protection. I mentioned in the iOS 16.3 beta one that in India at the time of recording the video, this option is not being enabled. So as you can see, still with iOS 16.3 beta two, this advanced data protection is not yet available in your country or region so that's the thing also with you know ios 16.3 beta 1 we had the option to add a security key so if you go to this apple id and click on password and security so as you can see it gives you the option to add a security key so if you click on this uh, security key so basically you can add your security key like physical devices for security a two-factor authentication if you want to implement that so that is there with iOS 16.3 update. So apart from that, there were not many changes I was able to notice. It is just, you know, very surprising that with this release, Apple also did not mention any release notes uh, in neither on their Apple website nor in the, you know, update page that we previously used to see. It just says this beta version of iOS should only be deployed on the devices that are dedicated for the beta software development. But there are a couple of bugs that I wanted to talk about in this video. So the first thing is, you know, with iOS 16.3, I noticed a Wi-Fi disconnectivity issue. So as you can see, if I click on this Wi-Fi, I have a couple of Wi-Fi networks are there. 
my home network and then uh, I have both 2.4 gigahertz and 5G band. So I've noticed this not with this iOS 16.3 beta 1, even with iOS 16.2 update, this Wi-Fi um, usually it disconnects after some time. And you know, there is no issue with other phones. I also have an Android phone. You know, the Android phone is always connected to the Wi-Fi and there is no issue with the Wi-Fi. But just that these iPhones usually gets disconnected after some time automatically right it relies on the mobile data if you have it switched on so what you have to do again you have to come back to the wi-fi settings and you have to manually tap on it in order to get connect so right now i'm trying to connect to the 5g network so as you can see it got connected there was some wi-fi disconnection that i you know noticed with this update i hope apple is able to fix that also people mentioned something like you know they were seeing more than usual data being consumed in the system data so if you click on this iphone storage as you can see it is a 64 gb iphone and you know 40.1 gb is used out of 64 gb now if i go down so as you can see, right now my system data is 9.89 GB. So, you know, I don't see at least on my iPhone, the system data is consuming a very large amount of storage. But in your case, if it is consuming a large amount of storage, give it a few days. Basically, this is not something that you can control by your own. This is managed by Apple through the backend and it usually depends on how many applications are installed, what are the activity that you do on the applications, the application caches. So those kind of stuff are being stored in the system data. So there's not a lot that you can do about it, but people, you know, they complain that like most of the storage is being consumed with the system data. So that's something I wanted to highlight. Apart from that, there were bugs like, you know, I mentioned uh, many a times on the previous videos that there is a swipe home lag, right? So, you know, um, there was a gap in the mid-December after Christmas, you know, this is the first update that we got with iOS 16.3 beta 1. I mentioned in the previous videos that, the, you know, with iOS 16.3 beta 1 and even the iOS 16.2 update, that swipe home lag was gone. I was, you know, partially wrong, I would say, because that lag was gone for the time being. And even after using that, you know, for, for two weeks, I would say the swipe home lag has returned. So it is not always happening. So if I just op try to open any application and just close it, I've just updated it. So it's not happening right now, but you know, it usually returns after two, two and a half weeks. So the only solution I could find is, is just to restart your iPhone and then it works. So these are some of the bugs that I would like Apple to fix, you know, probably with iOS 16.2.1 update or iOS 16.3 update, whatever Apple is planning for the public release. So apart from that, this update has been nice. If I talk about the battery life, this is my secondary iPhone. So I don't uh, use this iPhone a lot. If I click on the battery, battery health and charging, as you can see, you know, after updating the battery health has not degraded. So it is the battery health is still 88% and this iPhone 10 supports peak performance capability. So as I said before, I don't use this iPhone 10R much. So as you can see, the screen on and the screen off time are pretty less. So I'll try to make a follow up review talking about more bugs that I could find with this iOS 16.3 beta 2 and even the battery life and performance. Now for your reference, I ran the Geekbench 5 score. So after updating, so as you can see, the single core score came in about 1120 and the multi core score came in about 2348. So the scores are exactly like similar. If I could show you, if I go to the history, as you can see on iOS 16.3 beta 1, the single core scores and the multi core scores are you know pretty much similar so it is just a difference of few numbers here and there so not a lot of difference but i would say these scores are not bad for a you know four year old iphone 10r so then again that's it for this video let me know in the comment section whether you have updated to ios 16.3 beta 2 update or if you are using ios 16.2 update so let me know that in the comment section below and i will see you on my next video Bye bye